Hello everyone, Happy New Year. Michelle is here bringing you your annual forecast for 2023. We're going to begin by having a look at the big picture of what may be in store for us in the weeks and months to come. And then I'm going to be basically analyzing this overview spread month by month to give you a little bit of an insight or preview as to what might be in the upcoming future. Of course, we must remember when using any form of divination, including the tarot, that these predictions are not absolutes. They are based in the timeline potentials from where we are right now. And what spirit brings to our attention is what is most important for us to be aware of so that we can move forward in a really beautiful, heart-centered, power-neutral way to the best possible outcome. Kind of like a weather forecast that allows us to consider how we may plan and prepare ourselves to have the most positive, beautiful experience, whatever may come. So I want to say some of the themes that I'm getting with this overview for the year. To begin with, we have two tens present. The Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. Now, tens are about completion. They are about the final chapter coming around full circle. When you have two of a kind, as in two tens, that indicates a kind of mastery. We are working on mastering the experience of completion. The other two of a kind mastery numbers we have in this spread are two aces, two number ones, the ace of swords and the ace of pentacles. Aces are about starting afresh, turning over a new leaf and having a new beginning. So this year we are mastering not only endings and completion and full circle cycles, we are mastering new beginnings as well. So it feels like this year will be in a way creating these bookends to hold us energetically, uh, I want to say, for the next nine or ten years. So we have just completed a long range cycle of about ten years and we are basically from 2012, and we are energetically moving into a new cycle. And that transition is happening this year. I feel like really mid-year this year is when that transition is happening. So we are well on our way, and we're getting good at this letting go of the old and opening our hearts, opening our minds to the new. Another theme that I'm seeing in this particular spread is that we have a couple of what I would call cycles of purging. Now, if you think about purging in terms of physical healing, it is a time where things need to get cleansed. Things need to be released, energetically released, physically, emotionally, materially, and so on. And so the two times of the year that I see this cleansing or purging cycle, we have a small cycle in the month of April with this Four of Swords, where we could see a real rise in people experiencing physical illness again, um, a real sort of time of people withdrawing into themselves and having to get almost into a meditative state to get clear, to get sovereign. The other time of the year that I see this purge cycle is it starts in September of 2023 and it runs through October and completes in the month of November. So we could see a big kind of clearing, cleansing energy through the months between September and the end of November of 2023, but 
just like when you come out of having been really sick and cleansing and clearing, the aftermath is this. It's the sun, which is the best card in the deck. And this is showing up for December of 2023. So we're going to get through this and we're going to feel better as a result. This is not us going on a downward spiral that's never ending. It's really important to keep track of these cyclical energies this year and to realize that, you know, these are the processes that help us do that completion and new beginning. Now, the year 2023, if you add all the numbers together, it's two, two, and three. That is a number seven. Numerologically, the number seven has a lot to do with what I call spiritual hygiene. It is the number of self-reflection, um, you know, spiritual integrity, going within. It's it's the year where we are all having to do our inner focus, our inner work first. So I've heard it said, you know, if we want to create a better outer world, the best place to start is with our inner world. So that literally begins with your own relationship to yourself. It, it relates to trauma, addictions, We've got a card related to a little bit of mental health stuff here on the sidelines, addictions, um, feeling some pressure around having to make big decisions this year. And again, I'm getting this energy of, we know there's going to be a lot of movement this year. There's going to be a lot of dynamic energy moving. This is the swiftness card in the center. So we need to really pace ourselves and not feel pressured into making big choices too quickly. Let's go around the wheel here. We've got in the month of February, this Queen of Swords. She's a lot about making boundaries, about getting clear. Again, if we're talking about each person working on themselves this year, she is getting clear about an individual's mission, their priorities, their purpose, their direction, their values, and so on. So this is like a master plan year. It's a, a year where it would be a great idea to get clear within yourself Create a master plan based on your values, your truths, not about anyone else, starting with yourself and then moving your way out into the world through your most immediate relationships and further and further from there. We've got in the month of March, this beautiful trusting energy of go with the flow I feel as though there's an exquisite rebirth potential. I mean, March here in the Northern Hemisphere is always about springtime and renewal. This year, interestingly, when I first looked at this overview spread, I got a, a, a really beautiful sensation that nature is actually restoring itself. Mother Nature is restoring herself. And even though we may still see some extreme weather this year, I feel like it's very important that we notice the return of health. I'm hearing that frogs are returning, bees are returning, there's new growth in dead forests. I'm even getting, believe it or not, that there's ice coming back on the ice caps. Like, I get a, almost like a miraculous renewal. It might not happen overnight, but pay attention. Look for evidence that nature is on the mend, that the divine feminine is on the rise, that the power imbalance tilted away from the divine feminine is finally moving back in that direction. We don't need to go too far or overboard, 
but it does feel like we are in a process of renewal, of, you know, rebirth and growing from the inside out a beautiful new planet and a beautiful new human consciousness. Now, I know this sounds all very airy fairy pie in the sky, but I'm truly seeing that this is the wave and it's important that we notice examples of that. It's so easy in our media obsessions, Queen of Swords, to focus on all the doom and gloom stories and we may actually miss evidence of renewal. So let's keep our eyes tuned in and our hearts open to see that evidence. It's kind of interesting that I see here almost like the patriarchal dominant model. And when I first glanced at this spread and saw the, this uh, emperor underneath the Ten of Cups, what I heard is the patriarchy is going into retirement. And it's, uh, we're looking at maybe eight, nine, 10 years of transition where, you know, this is the final chapter of patriarchal dominance. And we're seeing that patriarch fading in significance, fading in potency. And what is replacing that patriarchal dominant model is this beautiful, synchronized, cooperative, family-centered, children-centered, heart-centered model. You see that? The patriarch is underneath this. This is what's being emerging. And this is what's fading into the background. All right, let's keep going. Month by month, we are now getting into the month of May. So May sees us holding on, waiting, holding out and waiting to see evidence of that which we already are aware of. So for a lot of us, there's going to be work behind the scenes in the month of May. We're being asked to be patient and almost wait to see the proof in the pudding. So just hearing something is not enough. We've got to be patient and observant in the month of May to see the result that we believe is where we're headed. So again, there may be some challenge between April and May, and we're supposed to hang in there till the month of June where the energy starts to move again. So please do not be discouraged if it feels like things are on hold or perhaps even a bit upside down. You see this hanging man? In the tarot, the hanging man is suspended for his own benefit. He's there to learn patience, to become better at observation, you know how when you see the world upside down, well, it gives you a whole new perspective and appreciation of reality. He's there being in a way suspended so that he can't take any more action until he's matured, grown, learned, or observed something in a new way. That's for all of us in the month of May. And then in June, we have the victory card. Small victories, step by step miles to go, baby steps, but we're going in a good direction. Super exciting. And then, woohoo, July, turning a new leaf. So Ace of Pentacles is a gift, a reward. It's something tangible. It can relate to moving. It can relate to material possessions, to property, to buying and selling of real estate. This is a very, very auspicious card. So for each of us, it may show up in a different way, but basically we are going to be rewarded somehow in the month of July. And this seems like it's tangible evidence that we are going in the right direction. 
and that we need to carry on. Do you see how that pentacle in the hand of our creator is being offered up as a beautiful reward and gift? And right below it, we see the golden path that leads to the gate of opportunity. So this is exciting. The month of July, look forward to that. And then we have another ace right beside it in the month of August. So this is an ace of swords. It's about kind of like a light bulb moment, you know, where you're like suddenly everything becomes clear. It all makes sense. This is that moment where the lights go on and it's quite amazing because it's showing up, well, it's showing up in the month of August, but also on the wheel spread, it's showing up in the area of new beginnings. So this feels like a double epiphany. We are really going to, again, be activated, be uplifted, be upgraded. And this is around our awareness, our perception, our ability to perceive and understand what is possible. New possibilities can relate to technology as well. It can because it's connected to communication. So there could be some new technology available to us as of the month of August. Okay, now we go into September and we're gonna go through this little phase. Remember I talked about the purging earlier on, so don't be alarmed, everyone. We go into September and we've got to go inward. Again, spiritual hygiene, sovereignty, follow the light of your own inner knowing. So in some ways this year, we're being asked to walk that path of initiation, of personal initiation. And there's a part of that path that each of us must walk alone to face our fears. And the month of September feels like, you know, we can do this quite quickly, actually. And then once we've overcome any sort of fears or anxiety, we can actually lead the way for others. So I feel that this is a very beautiful time for introspection, for retreat, for self awareness, self cultivation and bringing the light of your truth to guide you and others on the path ahead because there are a couple of slightly more challenging months to follow. So that had a September. Interesting also that September, the card related to the month of September is the Hermit. So it feels somehow appropriate that that card is there. Then we have the month of October, which you could really relate to the death or transition card. Here we go, the release of the old, the release of something that is no longer serving us in its present form. So this can be systems, this can be beliefs, this can be attachments, and again, as I was saying, there's this energy of some kind of great cleansing, great purging. Always what follows this kind of clearing or transition is a new dawn. You can actually see that dawn. You see that sunlight off in the distance. That's what follows this, this ending, this transitional journey. Before we get to that sun, because we know it's right around the corner, we go through our final rainstorm, and that is in the month of November. So this card is interesting. People look at it and they go, ouch, that just looks so painful and disturbing. Well, I like to say this is the open heart surgery card, meaning when it shows up, we are already we are already in the surgery. We are already in the healing. And you could say, oh, well, it's a terrible, dreary, rainy, 
day, but I like to say, actually, the rain is starting to clear away, the sun is starting to come out, and we are literally pulling these barbs out of the heart and healing it. So let's speak about November as the heart healing month, the month to heal our own hearts, our wounds, our traumas, our personal heart wounds, and our collective traumas. This is a powerful, beautiful month of healing because we get to December of next year and the sun really returns. It's the rebirth of the sun, which is so appropriate for the month of December, where we have literally the story of the Christ child returning to us. And there is the sun, the beautiful child returning in all its glory in the month of December of 2023. So let's come full circle now and look at this month of January. Wow. It's setting the tone for the year ahead. So this is January, 2023. And what we see here, I like to, this is to me the best card in the tarot. Well, next to the sun, which is the one right next to it. It's the best card in the tarot because it's the last card. The way I read the deck, this is the last card and it's the outcome of a life well lived. Basically, I tell my students, you know, the Ten of Pentacles is what you leave as a legacy to show the gift of your having lived a life well lived. So of course it can relate to money and inheritances and wills and estates and so on, but it can also relate to all the different ways that we gift the planet, we gift each other, our acts of kindness, our acts of service, all the different ways that we inspire or encourage others so that they can create something for themselves. So this is like, you know, um, that song, love is something, if you give it away, you end up having more. Well, this is also like, you know, gifts and blessings and generosity, uh, sharing material wealth and abundance. The more we spread our gifts around, the more we tithe and gift each other on every level, the more we flourish. So this is literally paradigm busting stuff. This is like, we are not going to have an economic crash. We are going to have an economic purge and an ultimate transition out of a system that's broken into something beautiful, something lasting. Now, I was given a little bit of um, possible heads up around a type of technology that was going to come available to us this year, perhaps in the spring, a free energy technology, which would literally balance the scales of resource and prosperity for the entire planet and all its population. So, this is something to also contemplate, to imagine seeing a type of restoration of justice, balancing the scales, coming into this out of a sense of lack. I mean, there's no cards here at all this year related to lack. I'm so excited. We don't have a single number five here in this spread. And we've been struggling with those fives. The fives are kind of like the growing pains cards. Well, we don't have them here. Uh, we've been really struggling with those fives the last few years. I'm happy to say we're on to the tens now, folks. And this is really good news. This is the best kind of news. So what a big year and 
I look forward to sharing with you week by week as I continue to present my weekly offerings with the, the forecast for the upcoming week ahead. And I also have lots of new offerings that I'm going to be presenting on a variety of different platforms in this upcoming year, hopefully in the upcoming month or two. So please stay tuned for all of that. If you would like to book a session with me, you can find the links below. Have an absolutely beautiful and blessed year of 2023.